Hi everyone, let's go ahead and start to try to use the photo P online photo editor. We're going to use it to alter our portraits. Uh, most importantly, we're going to crop it to the correct size for our canvas. However, there's also some manipulations you can do to make your photos a little bit better, but also you can change the color of it for your portrait. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to make sure that your photo is in the right format. You need to use it in JPEG format. So I've added a converter here for you. I also have an app on my phone that does this for me. It's a little bit more convenient. So depending on how often you use this kind of program, you might want to uh, invest in a converter on your phone. So to check if it's in JPEG form, what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you look at your photos that it says either JP, JPG or JPEG, so J-E-E-G. Um, so you can see mine are in JPEG form. So when it comes to these directions, you might find it easier to print it and to keep it up so that you can use the links here, at least for the first two. Um, but it's hard to do a split screen on your Chromebook. I know the imagery is really, really small. So what I'd suggest that you do is to go to photop.com and you might want to log in for the very first time to kind of ensure that it is saved. And so um, I'm going to X out on this so that I can actually see the um, imagery or excuse me, the program. And so I'm going to start a new project, but I'm going to open it from my computer. Now you'll be opening your imagery from your drive. Um, for me, it's on my uh, Mac. So I'm going to open from the computer. And I'm going to find my photos or this lesson. So I've got mine organized. And so I'm going to pick my photo. And so I'm just going to randomly pick one, but um, you probably want to pay really close attention to lighting and focus, really to ensure that it's your best photo. Oh, wow, that's a lovely photo of me. Okay, so I printed my direction, so I'm going to go through it step by step, but I also will refer to the um, I will also refer back to the online one that I have here as well. Okay, so we've gone through step three. So now we are select crop. Okay, so I have on the handouts, I have a lot of this stuff circled for you so that you can find it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this crop button here. And when I go to it, I'm going to look at the at the handout and it says that I need to go to fixed ratio. And for that, I'm going to either change it to 14 by 18 or 18 by 14. So for this, um, when I see this, this is going to help me to make sure it's the same size as the canvas. So my picture is a vertical. So I think I'm going to go 14 wide and 18 tall. And so that's the shape of the canvas. Okay, so I can use it just as, but my head's a little centered. So what I can do is I can drag it from the corner if I want to, and I can move this rectangle around to kind of play on where I want to position my head. And so because it's constrained, it doesn't change. So if I just drag the corners, it will always keep it in that format. Okay, so if I want it to be a vertical, I keep it like this. If I want it to be a horizontal, I would put 18 wide, 14 tall, and that's going to make it so that it is a vertical, or excuse me, a horizontal. And I'm gonna go ahead once again, I wanna move my head out of the center to try to have the best composition. So I definitely think this one works better as a vertical. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that. And I like, that I'm tilting to the right. So I'm going to actually give myself a little bit of space to the right for my head to tilt towards. Okay. So once I like it, I'm going to hit enter. So the next series of things are all situational. So what I mean by that is you don't necessarily have to do every single one of these in order to work. 
So for your photo to work. So go through all the situationals, try them out, see if you like them. If you don't like them, you can always undo it. Um, but you will need to make sure that you uh, convert it at the end and print it. So don't think you're done right now. Um, you need to uh, go through the entire worksheet to make sure that you've done it properly. So um, section eight on here is all about maybe your print file is too big and you can't see it. And so it just tells you and directs you to zoom out um, on here. So it's taking you to the view section of this. And it's having you zoom out so that it shrinks the picture so that you can see it a little bit better. But that once again is situational. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom it back in. And then the next thing is that you could control the value. We wanna have a range from light to dark. So you could go to image and you could go to adjustments. And I like to use levels. You can also use um, brightness and contrast as well. I'll show you that as well. So I like to drag these things off to the side so I can see how it's going to affect my photo. So if I need to brighten my photo, I can always go this way, right? We just still wanna make sure that we have a range of values. So this would not be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. I could give it more contrast. So contrast is gonna give you more light and more dark. So you can also shift that so that you can up the contrast as well, right? See how the darks are becoming even darker. So you could control that if you wanted to as well. Let me reset that. Another thing that I like to do, especially when I'm working in black and white is to adjust levels. And so what levels does is it places variations on the highlight, which is the white square, the midtone, which is the gray square, and the black, which is the shadow. And so you can see that I have a little bit of highlight, a lot of midtone, and a little bit of shadow. So if I wanted to increase that shadow, I could pull it over there. See how that becomes a little bit more dramatic. If I want to make it have a little bit more highlight, I can pull it over there. Okay, but I want to see a wide range from light, middle to dark. I'm actually going to keep that. I like that. So I'm going to say, say, okay. Okay, if you hit okay and then you have second thoughts, you can always go to edit and undo. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, another thing you can always do is when you are in your history. So if you go to the history section here and you look at um, these, they have a list of things. You can always delete these things as well and put them in the trash if you wanted to undo something that was in the previous step. So um, another thing you might want to do is just edit and alter your color. So you can go to image again and you can go either to auto color and try and see what that looks like. It's probably just going to make it even similar in color. So see that really did nothing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. But if you wanted to do something more dramatic with color, you could go to adjustments and you could go to color balance, or you could go to hue and saturation. So let's go ahead and try the one that's first here. So we're going to go to color balance. And so what that's going to do is this is the color wheel digitally. So green, red, and blue. And so if I mess with these controllers, right? It's going to give me more or less red, right? More or less green, right? More or less blue. And so you can really just play with this and see what strange colors and combinations you come up with. I'm going to reset this, right? I look kind of angry. So I was going with the red. Let's see if that works, right? Let's see how intense I can get this. Right. So by decreasing the green and the blue, you can see how I'm becoming more red. OK, I could say that and say, I love it. I'm leaving it. I want to be red. And I would say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and reset that, though, um, because I want to show you some of the other options. OK, another thing you can do is you can go to image adjustments. Right. And you can go to vibrance. And that's going to be the thing that plays with the brightness of your color. So saturation is how intense or how bright the color is. And so if I wanted to desaturate it, it's gonna turn gray. 
right? Which probably we don't want to do. If I move it this way, it's gonna make those oranges more intense. Um, same thing here. It's going to dull it down. It's going to in make the color more intense. So that's pretty cool too, right? So that's another thing I could try. You could also use most of these image altering colors together if you wanted to. So you could try color balance with saturation and, and um, <coughs> vibrancy. So I'm going to reset that again. But if you liked it, you would hit OK. okay. So another thing that you could do is you could have some fun with your image. So you could go to image adjustments and you could go to posterize. Nope. That's not what I wanted. Sometimes it has a little odd things to it. And so we just kind of go with it. Sometimes it takes time to process. So if it ever is taking its time, just let it do that. It'll get caught up. So this is a posterized feature. You've probably seen this before. So you can play with these levels to increase or decrease the posterization. I would not go too crazy since we're painting an oil painting, right? But you could try something like this if you wanted some sort of strange effect. You can see, obviously, when you go really high, it doesn't really do anything. So you can make some really minor adjustments here. So what does one look like versus five versus 10 right? Or you can just use the slider. Okay, so I'm going to reset that, get rid of that. So that's posterize. Another thing you can do is you can go to the filter area. Now, most of these filters really aren't going to work very well for our painting. So what we can do here is we can go down to stylize. And for stylize, oil paint just kind of makes it look like brush strokes. So don't go to that one. What you can do here is you can go to solarize. And so solarize basically almost looks like if this is a photo process that you can do in our dark room where you can shock um, photo paper with light. And it really alters dramatically where you have um, this color colorization. So you can see that this is pretty dramatic too. I could always go up to adjustments and play with color balance here too if I wanted to alter any of these, right? So I could add more yellow, more red, right? This might still be a little too dark. I might have to add some white in my painting. I can also adjust all of this, right? Where I can play with adding red to highlight sections where that might have a little bit more contrast. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this in the trash. So let's see if I drag it here. Oop, there we go. <coughs> I'll just go to this old fashioned one, undo. Normally I can dump those into the trash. So I got rid of my solarization. So the next part that's on this handout, I believe is the part we have to make sure that we are doing. I did not staple my handout. And so now I am having to go back and forth, back and forth here. Sorry for wasting your time. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to the top here and we're gonna go to image size. Now this is important, everyone has to do this. So go to image size. When you go to image size, what you want to do is you want to uncheck this box. You have to uncheck this box to get it to work. So make sure you uncheck this box. Then you want to select inches. So yours might be on pixels. Mine, I had previously set it inches, so it was already there. And so what I want to do is change this to nine, and that will automatically make it a seven, okay? So the DPI on this should be 300, okay? So, oh, keep switching on me. Let 
Let's do this. Okay. It's close to 300, so I'm going to let it go. I think it will be good enough. That's just going to be the clarity of the image. We don't want this number to be too small. So we don't want it to be any smaller um, than 200 um, or 250. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And so basically what that did is it made it so that the file is clear but not super large. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to export, right? And I'm going to export it as a JPEG. So for this image, one of the things that we need to make sure that we do is we need to keep in mind that this picture has to be smaller than um, four megabytes. So if I make this into JPEG, so make sure JPEG is at the top, um, I want to go ahead and this 70% is probably good. I personally, when I print normal images, like to keep it at 100 because I want it to be the highest quality it possibly can. Um, you can see the clarity of this detail here. Um, but the reason I'm not going to let it go to 100% is it might make the file too big so that I can't use it for the, the grid program. So I'm going to hit OK. And so that's going to then download it to my computer. So you want to rename that and you want to place that into a folder for this class. Okay, so that ends the altering of the photos using Photopea. The next thing we'll do is we'll try to um, add a grid to this photo so that we can draw it out easier. That will be in the next video.